This man has got the most beautiful haircut. <laughs> when you meet him, it might remind you of somebody else with a beautiful haircut. Robin J. Elliott is going to speak to us on how to boost your sales using joint ventures. Robin J. Elliott is the president of DollarMakers.com. He started his business 24 years ago. He's retired twice and keeps bouncing back. Robin has written 14, 14 books and is a well-known trainer. He presents seminars all the way across North America, from west to east coast, and in the UK. He emigrated to Vancouver in 1987 from South Africa. Dollar Makers is the world leader in joint venture, training, access, and support for small business owners, professionals, and individuals. Robin's chosen format for his slot is a 40-minute presentation during which he would ask you to hold your questions and then he'll do a 10-minute Q&A session at the end of his 40 minutes and then he and I will have a little interview and uh, the whole thing should wind up somewhere around about 10 minutes to 6. Fellow experts, when you see this man's haircut you will applaud and applaud and applaud. So let's give it up for Robin J. Elias. Thank you very much like our haircuts. We were meeting a so-called Christmas dinner the other night and um, I said, I confided in the gentleman next to me, I said, you know, I'm not just a pretty face and I've got to leave early to get my beauty sleep. So he said, well, in that case, you should have left hours ago. <laughs> so bottom line is, what is dollar make? It's all about making money and we unashamedly in business to make money. Things are not what they used to be. How many of you agree with that? Things are not what they used to be. Business world is changing fast. How many of you have your own businesses? Put your hands up. Okay, so whether you have a business or not, hello Victoria. Hello darling. How are you my dear? Lovely to see you. So what's changed whether you have a business or not? You can use joint ventures to make a lot of money. There's no question about that. Doesn't matter whether you have a business or not, but if you do have a business, this will be very valuable to you, I guarantee you. So things are not what they used to be. Things that used to work really well are not necessarily working the way they used to work. How many of you have noticed that? Right? Things are not working the way they used to work. Buying habits have changed. Do you think people are more interested in, in relationships now than they were and hence the rise of social media? People have changed a lot. They're not thinking the way they used to. They're not buying the way they used to. Things that used to work, as I say, are not working as well. As competition is escalating. I have a client in Surrey, there used to be three of them in that particular business in Surrey, they're now 43. It's a lot more competition and a lot of price cutting going on and all sorts of things. If you want to differentiate yourself, you need not to be involved in the price cutting. You don't want to have to do that stuff. The recession is not going away anytime soon. Sorry to disappoint you, but it's just a fact. Facts are facts. Recession is not going away, it will get worse and you want to be well prepared for that. Now the good news is that if you know how to handle that, you will benefit from the recession because you will be getting the customers of all your competition that go out of business because they don't listen. Business owners have to adapt or die. That's the bottom line. That's the real truth. Not easy to hear, but better to hear it now than, than be dead. Exactly. Which brings us to this. Most small business owners leave 90% of their potential profit on the table. Now, I know some of you are thinking that's a bit far-fetched, even for a Baldilocks, but the fact is it's true. If you're focusing solely on sales, what is your net profit? Right? The average net profit is between 6 and 16%. Between 6 and 16%. Back-end income, or the income that you get from joint ventures, is 100%. What do you want to focus on? 16% or 100 What's better? Naturally, the 100. 
And that's the back-end income. And that's really what you want to start looking at. You can have a lot of sales and go bankrupt, and many people do. So you've got to focus on sales, very, very important, but more importantly, on profits. And we're leaving a lot of that on the table. We work too hard, too long, and risk too much for far too little. It's amazing. I speak to people, they're happy to get one referral. Why not get the entire database? You know, you can pick one grape at a time, or you can get the whole orchard. Which one do you want? So it's, it's really important to think big. We're blissfully unaware of the fact that they could do a lot better. Because, well, I've been in this business 15 years. Well, that's your problem. Right? Things that used to work are not working anymore. We're at risk because we carry too much overhead. Ever come across that? If you're carrying too much overhead, another one of my clients, a friend of his popped in, he said, we, we build furniture. That's what we do. He's got $17 million worth of equipment. A lot of that is leased, and he's just not getting the sales. So overhead can kill you, and we know that will happen to your cash flow. Most important, this one. This one here, all their eggs in one basket. Now, ask any business owner on Canby Street when they're building the SkyTrain, all your eggs in one basket is not a smart thing to do. And so if you say, well, I read that book many years ago called Focus. Focus doesn't mean to the exclusion of all other income. It means focus on what you're good at and don't try to do things that you're not good at. Have your focus. But don't focus on the only one stream of income. Have, don't have all your eggs in one basket. Many people have lost out because of that. So don't leave that money on the table. And that's really where joint ventures start coming in. But when I said you have to adapt or die, I really mean that. A lot of people are in trouble. Now, they've got a you know, brave face, but the fact is they're in trouble. Some of you might be. That's what happens if you don't adapt, if you don't take the warning that things are changing. And we want to avoid that. The good news is that there is a solution, and the solution is no money, no risk, joint ventures. So what is a joint venture? Joint venture basically is when we work together to accomplish a common goal. Because every resource that you need, everything, is available through somebody else. And that can differentiate yourself. That can put you just where you want to be. So we use existing uh, resources. We share. We piggyback so that we can accomplish our goals. Everything that you need, somebody else has got it. Just imagine if there's two neighbors. How many of you mow your lawn every single day? Doesn't happen. Why not have one mower and you share the mower? Makes sense, but we all have to have our own mower. And that happens in business. You know, when you look at business, we all think we're in competition. There is no competition, really, unless you want it to be competition. We can work together to accomplish our goals. There is no competition. We're all unique. In fact, I would rather refer somebody else and get that referral fee, which is 100% profit, so I've got the time to do more business. We've got to get our egos out of the way. It's linking supply and demand and getting paid an ongoing commissions on sales. Ongoing commission. Now, this is not just me becoming a salesman for somebody else. This can be as sophisticated as you like. It can be linking two other people. One's got the database, one's got the product or service. You don't have to be selling your, you don't need a database. You don't need anything. You just need a brain and you need to understand. Every resource that you need is easily available. If it's equipment, Resource, any kind of resources, employees, credit, money. It's too many people make excuses in business and we say, oh, well, I can't do this because I don't have this. I can't get good people. I, can't, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough credit. I don't have the equipment. I can't expand. Just start thinking in terms of what is available instead of what isn't available. Somebody else has it, you can get it. And that's a good example there. One's got peanut butter, one's got jelly, one's got bread. And... The guy with the jelly says, you want a JV with that kid over there? And you get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's that simple. But it's not simple unless you do it properly. If you do it wrong, people can get hurt. So we want to do this with no money and no risk. I spoke to a guy the other day. He's a so-called coach. The problem with so-called coaches, there's a few good ones, but there's a lot of bad ones. A lot of people, you can't get a job. He failed in business, and now he's a coach. You know? <laughs> And now he's going to teach you how to fail in business too. But he's got a mouth. BS is good. He's good at that. Talk is cheap and money buys the whiskey, people. I can be wearing an Italian suit and Italian shoes. doesn't make me Italian. Right? So think about if you're going to get coached, get coached by somebody who's actually got a brain and that's done, or is doing what he's doing, not teaching you outdated stuff. 
or an employee trying to teach an entrepreneur. That's like a fish trying to teach a bird how to swim. So a joint ventures is working together to accomplish what you want. Joint ventures can do anything that you want them to do. And what can they do for you, whether you have a business or not? Now, if you don't have a business, you can make money by brokering joint ventures, by connecting these people up and getting commissions. And if you do have a business, you will never do business the same way again. First of all, you can get an increasing amount of residual income streams from divergent industries and geographic areas. Because your area might not be good. If you're in Florida, you've got a problem. right? If you're in, in Nevada, you've got a problem. But if you're in Utah, you're doing well. In Washington State, you're doing well. So if you've got all your eggs in one basket, geographically or industry-wise, you can be in trouble. You want to spread your risk. One of my joint venture partners is in Australia. I've never met him face-to-face. -face. We do a lot of business. And you know what? The business is good in Australia. So you don't have to be st stuck in one little place. And so if there is an earthquake or if there is Katrina, whatever happens and what's going to happen, you can avoid that. So you want divergent income streams. Reduced overhead, very, very important. Don't carry overhead if you can avoid it. And that increases your profits. It gives you less risk and a lot more flexibility. You can move and groove, right? You don't want to be stuck with so, you burdened by so much overhead that you're paying for everything. It's far better to get somebody else to do the work and let them pay you, right? And you make more money than that business anyway. When I get paid a commission, it's often more than the net profit of the business that's sending me the commission. So you've got to start thinking about these things. Reduce your overhead. Complete industry uh, differentiation. I spoke to one guy, he's in Alberta, and as you know, in Alberta, it's hard to get good people. This is David Dick. He's from, how many of you have met David Dick? Those of you that came here to get good connections, this is the best connections you're going to get, you're going to get today. If you're thinking about investments, real estate investments, any kind of money, that man you should be talking to. And you'll be glad that you came just because you met him. But he's from Alberta, and, and you know, David, it's hard to get good people in Alberta. There's a shortage of good people, lots of business, not many people. So this guy had a restaurant, and his problem was he couldn't find good people to work in his restaurant. And he said, well, what should I do? I taught him to do joint ventures. He made a lot more money, so he could pay his servers in his restaurant double what the others were paying. He had no problem getting servers, suddenly. So if you can earn the profit, suddenly you differentiate yourself. And it means whatever problem you've got, you're going to overcome. Unlimited generation of qualified prospects. Does that sound too good to be true? It does. We do it. And the reason why you can do it, again, is because you're working with other people. You're not trying to be the one-man band, the lone ranger knocking on the doors, doing it all yourself. You can work with other people. And it's beautiful to do that because you build some great relationships. I mean, this whole event is a joint venture set up by Iman. Iman's a really great guy, and he's a smart guy, and he put this thing together. It's all a joint venture. And you can do this with no cost or risk. The implementation generally is no money and no risk to implement joint ventures. So that coach I was telling you about, he says, well, my fee is $2,000 a month. And I said, well, what is the implementation cost? Because he teaches people how to do all sorts of things, direct mail and this and that, all things that don't work that well anymore, possibly. Implementation costs can be anything from three to $6,000 a month. He doesn't tell his clients that. This is no cost implementation, which is, makes a big difference. You should know about that. So you want those multiple streams of income, and that's what joint ventures will do. So the system one, I want to teach you three systems real quick. The first one, is something that will give you unlimited qualified prospects is unconverted leads. People, this is a beautiful thing. It is lovable. This is something you want badly. Think about a trade show. How many of you have had a booth at a trade show? Anybody? Okay. So most people have got a booth, and you're there, and what you, why have you got the booth? To sell your product or service, right? So you're collecting leads, right? Yes or no? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're collecting leads. We collect all those leads, we try to sell the leads, and when you don't sell the leads, if we're smart, you put them in a database, and if you don't, you throw them away. And guess what? Most people are not that smart, they throw them away. And so all those leads are lost. Well, anybody that's at that trade show, let's say it's a business opportunity trade show, people are buying businesses, that's what they're selling businesses, 
Everybody that comes to that trade show is a prospect. Would you agree with that? So the guy next door to you, even if he's not selling the same product as you, all of his leads are qualified leads for you, potentially. Because they're all people that want to buy a business. The fact that they don't buy from Victoria doesn't mean they can't buy my business. Is that right? And the fact they don't buy from me doesn't mean they can't buy David Dick's business. Right? Or Kirk's business. They can buy from somebody. So what I want to do is find those unconverted leads at that trade show and give those other trade show guys a reason to share those leads with me. And if you're worried about the Privacy Act, there's a way to get around that very sophisticated, very simple, very legal. So don't worry about the Privacy Act. We've got that handled. The fact is, when one insurance, how many of you are financial planners? Any financial planners here? Nobody. Well, wow. one. Okay. Financial planner. Financial advisor. It's the same thing. You sell insurance, right? And you sell stuff. Okay. Sorry? Okay, so when you were a financial advisor, let's say you were, and, and Victoria was a financial planner, financial advisor, and you got a client and he was ready to buy insurance or whatever, and he didn't invest with you, but he's still a qualified buyer. You could refer him to Victoria. 99% of financial planners don't do that. They keep them for themselves. It's all mine, it's all mine. It's pathetic, that. But that's what we do, because the lone ranger, right? What he should be doing is saying, hey, you know, I'm sorry I couldn't help you, but I'm going to refer you to my friend Victoria. In fact, hold on, I'll get her on the line. Get your magical iPhone out, call Victoria, and say, Victoria, I'm sitting here with John Jones, and uh, you know, I couldn't help him, but would you speak to him? Or just do it, there's in many ways, sophisticated ways, to hand over that lead to your, your so-called competition, and she can do the same thing. You can do this unconverted lead thing across industries, within industries, across different geographic areas, and it's free leads, because why? You're only paying for converted leads. So you only share that competition with, your, with the one that buys if they close the sale. So if I go to a guy at a trade show and I say to him, how many of your leads are you converting? 5%. And we actually, Rika and I knew a guy, a woman, she was selling in-house in saunas, really nice in-house saunas, very expensive. Her, her boss was buying leads, he was buying lists, and he was doing trade shows. 5% he converted. 95% of those leads, he threw them away. People that are in a health and wellness show, what else could they buy? Hundreds of other products and services. So all, he said, all we said to him was, would you like to, those leads that you normally throw them away, would you like to monetize that and make more money? Sure. Okay, this is how you do it. Easy peasy, right? And it's fun. So unconverted leads is a massive gold mine across industries, within your own industry, and it can work very well for you. You just have to know how to set it up and that it's non-threatening and people are not worried about the Privacy Act. And they should be worried about the Privacy Act. We do it so that they're not. And you do it correctly, they're not handing over their database. That would be weird. You don't do it that way. I'm weird, but I don't do weird things. Okay, so I am, yes. Okay, so that's what you do when you throw away those, those leads that you haven't converted. They're qualified, but you're throwing them away. That's exactly what you're doing. And that's what exactly what many businesses... You know when you go to a restaurant and you find that big fish bowl, no fish, but many business cards? I'm always saying, how did the fish survive? They throw away, the, they choose two and they, they win the free lunch and they throw the, away, throw the rest away. Why don't you do a deal with a restaurant so that you get those business cards and it's easy to do, again, there's a, a way to do that and you get all those leads. Now, think of the Salmon House or Cordova's or a really nice restaurant that you know. Wouldn't you like to have the, the kind of guys that go to those upmarket restaurants? Yes or no? Oh, yes, I'm all awake. I'm so surprised. Thank you. So you get those leads, right? Don't throw them away. Don't be silly. And, and you can, don't throw stuff away. So unconverted leads, massive way. System two, this one, I love this thing. I've been doing this thing for 24 years. And my clients love this thing. Pay for results only. It's free exposure. And it's called contingency advertising. You pay contingent on results. I got a gentleman recently came to me, he said, oh, I've got this little publication, we put it out in coffee shops and we put it in doctor's rooms and all over the place. It's only $300 a month to, to advertise on this. Now, I'm not cheap, but I am frugal. I don't like throwing my money down the toilet, right? So I said to him, well, I'll tell you what, so you want $300 a month? He said, yes. I said, so I told him what I charge for my coaching. I said to him, if I have to pay you 10% of that, 
how many leads do you think, how, many business, how much business do you think I could get from that advertise, advertisement that I'm going to pay $300 for? So he told me, so I said, well, if I was paying you a commission on that, you'd get a lot more. Would you agree? He said, yes. I said, which one do you want? You know, want this or you want this? So he said, well, I'd rather have the big amount. So I said, fine, put the advert in. Put your telephone number so they can respond to you. If you don't trust, trust me, this is the way to get around it. All the responders, people responding to that advert go directly to you. And everyone, then you send me the leads, and everyone that I convert, I pay you a commission. So, so I can't rip you off. You can do a spot check and see. Yes, sir? How does he know if I converted? Good question. The leads, so he advertises, right, in his publication. They respond to him if they're interested. He sends me the leads. Now, I got the leads. Now, if he wants to know if I'm honest and that I converted or didn't convert, he does a spot check. A month down the line, he picks up the call, picks up the phone, and he calls one or two of them, or all of them, if he likes, and he says, hi, just as a matter of interest, you responded to that lead for Robin Elliott, the Baldilocks guy. Did you end up buying his services? Yes. Oh, well, let me see if the swine paid me or not. <laughs> Easy. And if I know that he's doing that, I'm going to behave myself. You know, Jim Rohn said there's only eight bad people in the world, but they get around a lot. They get around. They all live in Vancouver. So, <laughs> swine. So, contingency advertising. We've done this with radio, television, all kinds of advertising, and it works. So, recently with a client of mine, they did it with a radio talk show host down in Seattle. They had it, well, it wasn't recently, it was a while back. Talk show host in Seattle. They said to him, we've got a dentist up in Surrey. We want to get Americans coming up. We'll do your teeth. We'll do your teeth, your kids' teeth, your dogs. No, they didn't say the dog. You and your kids, your family's teeth. If you're happy, we don't want you to pay. All we want you to do is tell your listeners about us. They were booked solid for six months. That's a form of contingency advertising. But believe me, contingency advertising, you can advertise anywhere. Bottom line is this guy with a $300 a month deal, three months of advertising. Guess how many deals I got? Not one referral. Not one. It would have cost me nine, three threes and nine, nine hundred dollars. I would have lost. It would have gone down the toilet. Instead, he got his space filled because he had the space open anyway. He got his space filled. I got free exposure for three months. He felt good. I felt good. We're still friends. And now we're doing a different kind of advert. So contingency will work for you. It's unfulfilled space. Their cost is zero on that. And it's fun. You build relationships. You get to know people. And my name goes out. And that's what you want, isn't it? You want your name to go out? So don't tell me you can't afford advertising. You can afford advertising if you do it this way. The key is don't work with a sales rep. The sales rep is a sales rep. He wants a commission. He's not a businessman. He's not an entrepreneur. He's a sales rep. So don't deal with him. Deal with a business owner. Deal with the decision makers, and then you can do it. But you can honestly, you can do this across the board, and it's unlimited. Contingency advertising is fun because it's creative. And if you approach it right and you use the right words, you'll be amazing, amazed at what you can do. So that's the advertising that, you know, you get an idea, you put up the advert, your sales go up and you make money. That's the idea of advertising. The fact is, advertising, in fact, is like that. It's gambling. I'm not a gambler. Been to Vegas a number of times. We never gamble. I don't gamble because I think it's stupid. People make money as a casino. So I don't gamble. But this is what you're doing when you're advertising. Unless you're really good at it and you've proved an advert to work. Now, what would happen if this guy was paying, was sending me lots of leads and I was sending him more than $900 in commission? That's when I start paying for the advertising. That's how I get to test the advertising. Right? So I get to test it on a contingency basis. If it's working for me, then I start paying because I save money. It's cheaper to pay than to pay commissions. So you can't lose. It really works. You've got to use the right words and you've got to approach them correctly. You don't want to be a gambler. Stay away from, from all these ad because that advertising rep will tell you anything. He'll lie through his teeth to sell you the advertising. And then when you say, oh, it's not working, my dear. I've, been, I've paid $8,000 over the last three months. He said, well, the problem is you've got, to, you've got to do it for another three months. You haven't been advertising long enough, fool. And you are a fool because you shouldn't have done it. You should have done contingency. So don't be a fool. System three, this one is really for business owners. This is a no-brainer. Once you get used to doing this one, once you really understand it, you can't lose. It's called the back end. 
And believe me, this is not this back end. This is the money. Show me the money. The back end is all the income that you get from other businesses. And this is a beautiful thing. It is really great. But what do most of our salespeople do? We're so busy sell, sell, sell that we're not listening to the client. We don't know what the hot button is. We don't know where the pain is. We don't know all the other things they buy. And it's not about me. It's all about him. So when you're really listening, you can say, you know, you need to speak to my buddy Bob. And by the way, you should also speak to my buddy Ron and start referring him to those people, but get paid for it and set that up in advance. And there's a way to set it up that you do get paid. Now, just think about this. The guy that was sending us the house, every six months or so, he sends us a, I call it a begging letter, because that's really what it is. He's sending us, please send me referrals, please send me referrals. Listen, you might as well go and join Obama. He's a socialist, this guy. I'm not going to send you referrals just because you ask. Go and sit on, on East Hastings and beg, because that's what you are. You're a beggar, right? You're not giving me anything. Why would I send you referrals? I'm a, I'm a businessman. I'm in business to make money, not to give you referrals. I work for me. What have you done for me lately? Think about it. You're not in business to make other people rich. You're in business to make you rich. So if he was to say to me, hey, like another realtor I know, you send me somebody who buys a house, I'll give you 500 bucks. No problem. I refer him to my entire database. But he hasn't got the brain to do that. He says, I'm selling houses, I'm selling houses, I'm selling houses. And that's as far as he goes, no back end. So if you want something, you've got to pay for it. It's not free. Right? You've got to pay. And if you're paying good commissions and you're generous, you'll make even more money on the back end. So if you're paying commissions, you can expect. Now, how many of you have been sending people business and you haven't been paid for that? And now you're wondering, how can I change that? Because it was be embarrassing going back, right? Because now I've got to go back to him. From now on, you've got to pay me. Don't do that. This is what you do. You go to him. You say, listen, I just want to apologize to you. I feel really bad. Oh, why is that? Well, I was at a seminar the other day, and we had this funny-looking bald guy with a weird mongrel accent, and he was talking, and he said, I'm cheap, and I'm a socialist. <laughs> and uh, I've just got to wake you up a little bit. So, and I mean it. And so, <laughs> And he said that I should be paying you a commission. Now, even if he's never sent you a commission, it doesn't matter. You say to him, from now on, I'm going to pay you 10% or 15 or 20%, whatever it is, on all the business you send me. Any business that converts, I'm going to pay you a commission. And I'm going to give it to you in writing. I don't want to be cheap. I don't want to be a socialist. I don't want to join Obama. How do you feel about that? He's going to say, oh, great, you're going to pay me a commission. Thank you so much. Then you say, would you mind returning the favor? That's all you say. Would you mind doing the same for me? And suddenly, now he's going to pay. And if he says, no, I don't pay commission, no problem. You start referring him to his competition in future. So you can convert them real quick. Just, just know how to do that. It's all about not can you do it, it's just how do you do it. So you convert him back to, to paying your commission. But the, this thing is 100% profit, and it is unlimited. And if you think back to that uh, wonderful realtor, how many services could he be re recommending to his clients on an ongoing basis? He could use gift certificates to do that. Imagine he sends out gift certificates for a free carpet cleaning of one room up to a certain size and a gift certificate for a free 30-minute consultation by an interior designer and on and on and on. And all of that is resulting in back-end sales for him. He's already built a relationship. We already trust and love him. We think he's dumb, but otherwise we love him. But if he starts doing that kind of thing, he's going to be smart because he's going to make a lot more money. He hasn't got all these eggs in one basket. Housing market tanks, or it's a quiet time of the year, he's still developing that residual income stream. So whether you have a business or not, you can do this. No questions asked. Back end will work for you if you make it work. But it's not going to work by accident. It will work because you make it work. Right? Same thing with these seminars, people. You can't come to a seminar and think, well, I'll just get the material, stick it under my bed, sprinkle some fairy dust on it, go to sleep in a drunken state, and the next morning I'll wake up wealthy. It doesn't work, even in Vancouver, I'm sorry. You've got to work it. Right? So even if you get one idea today, you've got to put that into action. You've got to take action. Same thing with joint ventures. It doesn't work magically by itself. You've got to set it up. Now, it's just like riding a bike. The more you do it, the more you learn, the more you earn, the better you get at it. And again, so, rap so abundantly and you will reap abundantly. But you've got to be abundant. You've got to really get into it and get excited about it and passionate about it. Because Zig Ziglar said you can get anything you want out of life if you'll help enough other people 
to to get what they want. So you know it, just do it. Right? And start thinking, start thinking. What do you want? What are you looking for? What keeps you awake at night? If you had three wishes, what would they be? Oh, health, wealth, and happiness. Well, what do you mean by health? What do you mean by wealth? How would you measure your happiness? Let's start working out how I can help you to get that. And then you start referring them to the right people, you start making money. Now, this is a gift for you. Free membership in Dollar Makers. This used to sell for $247. If you want to, go to, free to dollarmakers.com, get free membership. There's videos, there's all sorts of stuff that will teach you how to do the stuff I've been telling you about. It's free. Dollarmakers.com, sign up, get it. It's no charge. It's free for you. There's no obligation. Conference calls, newsletters, seven books, a whole deal. It's free. But this is the problem that many business owners are sitting with right now. Cash flow. How many of you want to improve your cash flow in your business? Okay. If you want to push your cash flow up, there's a special way to do that, and that's called joint ventures. And if you do it right, it'll happen soon. It doesn't have to take a long time because it's scalable. It's very scalable. You don't have to live in a drought, and some people are, and the drought's getting worse. And they don't want to admit it, but it is. They're living on borrowed money. Every resource you need, you can get. And if you, can, if you know that that's true, you're going to ask for it. It's the same thing. You know, if you knew that under each chair, I stuck a $20 note, by now you probably would have got it. No, it's not a penny note. But if you don't know about it, you're not going to get it, right? If you knew it was there, you would. So I want to do a little exercise with you because I've been told by Roger Killen that you're very smart people. So I want you to hold your hand as tight as you can and the person next to you has to try and open your hand, right? So one holds the hand as, fist as tight as you can and then you try and get them to try and get that hand open. Try and get that hand open. Come on, come on, come on. I'm not going to let you go home if you don't do this. Shake a leg. Okay. Now, you've got to, now try and get that fist open. Okay. One holds the fist, try, can you get it open? Is it hard? Right, here's the secret, right? Here's right, Rex. Rex is a smart guy, he's a tough guy, right? Make your fist again. Okay, Rex, please open your fist. There we go! Right? You don't have to force it, just ask. We have not because we ask not. Here's another way. Okay, make your fist again. You know what I'm going to do now, right? So you're too smart now. Okay, here's five bucks. <laughs> oh, yes! Five bucks! So there's two ways. The one is you just have to ask. You'll be amazed what you can get if you just ask. Right? Because people are friendly. And the more, here's the other thing. The more successful they are, the more likely they are to help you, and the more generous they will be. So work with successful people. Don't work with losers that are you know, crying and living off his mother and living in the basement smoking pot. In fact, that's what a lot of people in BC, they think a joint venture is something you smoke. <laughs> Not really, no, no. Yeah, see my shiny teeth. I'm scared of going to the dentist, get my teeth whitened because it rips the enamel off. I think it's very really dangerous. That. So I wanted to know what to do, so I went online. They said the best thing you can do is wear a brown shirt. To, you know, get your face tanned really bad, then your teeth will look white. You don't have to rip all the enamel off. Remember that. You've got those shiny white teeth. No teeth after a while. Every resource you need, baby. Don't, don't pay or risk. As long as someone else has it, you can get it. Borrow it or piggyback on it. Distribution, sales teams, everything you need. We took one profit center in our business from 4,000 a month to 16,000 a month in four days at no cost. Four days. One joint venture. No money, no risk. And I can tell you how we did that, but I don't think we have time now, but it's an amazing story. And I always use it and repeat it. You've probably all heard it before. But the thing is, it works. 4,000 to 16,000 in four days at no cost. That's the power of a joint venture. Now, if you ask, that's one way. The other thing is, be prepared to pay for it. Offer Rex five bucks, and suddenly now there's an incentive. But most of us go in the asking and begging like a beggar. Don't do that. Say, what can I do for you? What are you looking for? Right? What is your pain? How can I help you? And when you've got that attitude, everything changes. Everything changes. Give them what they want to get what you want. Just be a little bit more generous and concerned about them and the doors will open, the hands will open and all those resources, the sales teams, everything you need suddenly will open and stop thinking that I'm locked into my business and this is all I do and this is my focus because that's your limitation. Right? 
I sell wagon wheels in Cornell, right? Well, then you're pretty limited. First of all, nobody's buying wagon wheels anymore, probably. But the second thing, you're in Cornell. You gotta think of the whole world and everybody is your partner. And a joint venture guy, everybody's your partner and everybody's a potential in income source. Use leverage instead of cost and risk. Use the leverage. Leverage is the way that you can move the world. You know, Jay Abraham is a very, very smart guy. I learned a lot from him. They asked Jay Abraham, Jay, he's made billions of dollars for his clients. He's a really, really successful guy. And they said to him, of all the things that you teach businesses, you charge them a lot of money to do that, what is the most valuable thing you ever taught them? He said, the most valuable thing that I ever taught anybody is joint ventures. And he said, less than 1% of the owners of small, business own, of small businesses understand and use joint ventures. So really, once you know this, you're unique and you will be the go-to expert because people don't know the stuff. In five minutes, I will know whether you understand joint ventures or not, and you'll probably be in the 1% if you do. So that's what it all is. It's putting the jigsaw puzzle together, working together to get where we want to be, and thinking how we can achieve that. We did a boot camp up once in Cornell, funnily enough, and a guy called me and he said to me, you know, I'm a, I think he's in HVAC or something, but he said, I'm working in, but I'm, uh, he was serving b uh, homes, not businesses, it wasn't B2B. And he said, I'm, I've got four or five of my friends coming to this event and I'm paying for them to attend the event because I've read your books, I know what it's all about, and I want to joint venture with them, but I'm, they don't understand the stuff yet. So I'm paying for them to come on the boot camp so that they can learn, and then I'm going to pitch them on joint ventures. This guy cleaned up. He did really, really well because of that. That's why we offer free membership in Dollar because you say, the more people learn about this stuff, the more opportunities you have to do business with them. So go to joint, you know, it's free, so you can learn and get your friends to learn because when they learn, they're more open to this way of thinking. It's easier to set up your joint ventures, much easier. You want to get the right guidance as well. I mentioned earlier on, not everybody is what they seem to be. Don't take advice from someone who's more screwed up than you are. <laughs> That's good advice, right? Don't take advice from somebody who's more screwed up than you are. And the second thing is, learn from a coach who's already doing what he's teaching you. He's actually doing it. He's not teaching you outmoded stuff. There was a guy here, right here in Vancouver at one stage. He's, he ran away to the States. People wanted to kill this guy. He was teaching about websites and stuff that didn't work anymore. It used to work. His outmoded stuff that he was teaching, courses, very expensive courses. And uh, he had to f literally flee the country, this guy. So they're gonna be, it's got to be up-to-date, current stuff. Right? And you talk to a guy like um, Owen Clark. He's up-to-date on what's going on because he's actually doing it. He's not teaching you something that's way out of date. Make sure that you're learning from people that are doing what they're doing. And one tip about joint ventures is don't, I mentioned it before, don't work with sales reps because they're not in a position. There is an exception to that. And that is when the sales rep has access to stuff that he can make decisions about, then you can work with him. But when he can't make a decision, work with his boss. And if he can't make a decision about it, no problem. Then you can work with him because he can make a plan. But if he can't make a decision, do not work with him. Work only with decision makers. And the more selective you are, the better you will do. There is no question about that. Now, I know I've got to give you some time for questions. Are you showing me the little cards and stuff? Did you show me a card? No, because oh. you're pretty well right on time. Oh, okay. So at this stage, anybody got any questions, curses, comments? Um, I guess I maybe answered my own question. But <laughs> it was what percentage should you offer to somebody? It's a very good question. Or should actually. be a percentage or should be a dollar amount? I guess it would depend on what your service is um, Yeah, worth. it's a very good question because it depends on what your margins are, right. uh, what your capacity is. Like, for example, if you're offering me a commission or a percentage or an amount on a, on a service, if, if you're really quiet on a Wednesday morning and, and those services are only for Wednesday mornings, then you could pay more commission on a Wednesday morning, for example, than other times. You want to make it really simple. Don't, don't say it's of the profit because that's how do you calculate that. It should be of the gross amount. So if somebody pays me $1,000, you get $100 sort of thing. Um, Make it very simple for them to understand. And also, when you put that together, get it in writing so that people know, are they going to pay tax? Do they pay you by PayPal, by check? Who do they make a check out to? Do they pay you tax? 
if it's in writing, people don't get confused about that. So it's good to have that. But it depends, you know, if you're selling computer hardware, you've got such a small margin, you can't pay much, your margins are on the peripherals. So, in, and you can, by the way, it doesn't have to be money. You can pay people in pots and pans, anything. There's services, you can do contras, there's many, many ways to compensate. But it's a good question. It depends on, on what the kind of business is, the capacity and the, and the margins. And it's better to make it simple. The one realtor that I know, he's got a little thing printed out and he says, you know, 500 bucks if you send me somebody that buys a house or sells a house. Right? So make it simple. Good question. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. What is the way that we approach to, to people when we want to offer them commission um, for our services, for whatever we are selling? How, how do we approach to them offering them that commission? What is the best way to, 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 to get to them? And my one more question, so you can. Um, for example, we go to trade show. Mm -hmm. We go from boot to boot and we collect lots of business cards and lots of people that we could, in the future, we could offer our service, our products, or whatever to. Uh, how do we contact them? What is the best way approaching to them? You know. Okay, so the uh, first question was, and good question, thank you. First question is, how do you approach them to pay them a commission? You don't. You don't say to people, hey, if you bring me business, I'll pay you a commission, because now you're putting at the level of your salesperson. So the best way to approach them is to start off asking them what they want. And in many, many cases, it's, it's, you can translate it into money. So for example, the guy says to you, you know what, my son's going to college and he needs a car and I, I need to get a car from him. And what's it going to cost you? 400 bucks a month. Well, how about I pay for that car? What? Yeah, I, I want to buy the car for your son to go to university or to college. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, the way that works is I pay a commission on all, right? And that's how you introduce it. You say, on all the business, are you calling on the, all these people every week? How about every Friday you send me a list or you send this out to your newsletter or you put it on your database or we do a conference call, whatever it is. Then you introduce the solution to his problem is the commissions that you're going to pay him. It's a little bit backwards, right? But don't go to him and say, hey, if you bring me business, I'll pay your commission because you're insulting him. You're, you're making him your, your salesman. That's exactly what they want to say. Exactly. So that's how that's you... Yeah, that's why it's a good question. Find out what does he want and then translate it into that. But first talk all about him, right? What do you want? What's hurting? How can I help you? And, and how can I use my resources to help you? Then with a trade show, the way to approach them is to say, you know, you were at the trade show and you spoke to Bob about his Pepsi vending machines. And uh, he mentioned that you, that you were very interested in some business. And he asked me to give you a call and to tell you that he's sorry he couldn't help you, but that he's referring you to me. And what we do is we've got a, a, a paving thing. So he suggested that you talk to me and maybe I can help you. Again, it's, it's just scripting. It's, it's, it's really just the semantics of the way you do it and what you say. Because again, if you do it wrong, uh, then the Privacy Act kicks in and you're going to hurt people's feelings and you're going to upset them and you, now you become a salesman. Next question. That's it. I just, uh, do you have the scripting for people that are going to now dial into the Dollar Maker site? Do you have examples of... If they, if they join Dollar Makers, they can find, you know, there's 10, 12 hours of videos and all sorts of resources. And we have so not scripting like that, but we have a conference call as well. Every week and they can, well, every two weeks they can get onto that thing, ask questions on the conference call. We've got newsletters that go out, there's podcasts. There's a lot of information. Good question. Last question? No? Everybody knows everything? Jolly good. Yes, the lady with the scarf. scarf. What, if, what if someone says, I don't want you to send my details on to somebody else? OK, well, that's very good because okay, they don't want you to send their details on to somebody else. They don't want you to refer me to anybody else. Well, that's fine. If they say, don't refer me to anybody else, then you don't. Most people don't do that, but it's the way that it's done. Again, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, so we know what doesn't work. <laughs> and, and that's why it's good to, to that's, you know, every situation is different. Anybody that's got a cookie cutter solution for you, run for the hills. Because there is no cookie cutter solution in this business. It's a very creative business. But it's a good question. If they say to you, don't refer me to anybody else, then don't. But many times they're looking for something. They, they, the reason why you've got the, why they gave their name or made an inquiry is they want something. If you can help them to get what they want just from a different business or a different way, 
they're going to be happy to hear from you. And again, you can use gift certificates, freebies, all sorts of ways to get them involved with you. And it works really well. One, the more you do it, again, the more sophisticated you get, um, the, the smoother you get, the easier it works. But that's a good question. And if they say, don't contact me, they don't, because they'll beat you. You don't want to be beaten. It's not nice. Okay, last, last, last question. Anybody? Otherwise, I feel hurt. No. Jolly good. Well, look at this bold man sitting here. <laughs> I better behave myself now. Did I have anything else to say? Oh, yes. Yeah, so that's get the right guidance. Get out of the minefield. Walk in the, in the footsteps of somebody who's already walked in that place. And you can really get what you want to be, where you want to be. There is gold at the end of the rainbow if you do it right. If you do it wrong, you get drowned in the waterfall. <laughs> this is a good way of ending. Say, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>
set yourself up so that you're not going to risk your money or put money into it. Right, okay. You're clearly a very eloquent speaker. Thanks. How did you acquire that skill? Well, if you ask my wife about the first time she heard me giving a talk, it was disgusting. When I was growing up, we grew up poor. My mom used to call me Tiki back. And in South Africa, that a Tiki was a, like a, about the size of a dime, it was three, three pennies. And so she called me Tiki back because I got a small mouth. Well, if your mother calls you small mouth, guess what happens? You tend to mumble and be a little bit, you know, with a weak chin and a small mouth. Does. So I just did a lot of courses and a lot of, you know, the Dale Carnegie public speaking is fantastic. And I did a number of others, but Dale Carnegie was the best of all. And I just did a lot of courses and practiced and practiced and still getting there, but right. on the way. Okay. How do you promote your JV expertise services? We use exactly what we teach to promote ourselves. So when I talk about contingency advertising, we're actually doing that. When I talk about back end, we do that. So everything that we teach, we actually do. And that gives us credibility, whereas a lot of people are teaching things that they've, that they've read in a book or they bought a course somewhere. Right. Any online marketing part of your marketing mix? We've got an online program, it's called jointventuresforlife.com, and in fact, I spoke to gentleman Anthony here earlier on, and I said, we need help marketing that online, and we pay 50% affiliate program, so we're not great on online. We've got a good online program, but we learn from other, and we joint venture with other people that know how to do that better than we do. So you are outsourcing your uh, online marketing needs in exchange for your internal services. Yeah, we joint venture that. All right. Words of wisdom for newbie experts, given your depth of experience in this industry? I think the key is you've got to differentiate yourself. If you just, you know, if you're trying to differentiate yourself, oh, we're the best, we give the best quality and our prices are the best, then you're just an idiot because everybody says that and it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I, it's, it's, I've just got to be it's honest. You know? <laughs> yes, if you're fat, it's not because you you're large, you're fat, this is fat, you know, fat. So, you know, if you want to differentiate yourself, you've got to really give extra value. And in fact, the beauty of joint ventures is you can give away a whole lot of value. You know, you can, for example, now we're working with a restaurant, we say to the restaurant, when people come in at the end of the meal, you can now literally go up to the couple and say, did you enjoy your meal? Thank you very much, it was great. Well, as a thank you gesture for you, Mrs. Victoria, for coming in tonight, the management has authorized me to present you with this gift certificate for a free fa uh, facial or massage down at the, at the salon, and you can do that with no money, no risk, and get paid a back end on that. So, you know, that's differentiation. It doesn't happen in most restaurants. A restaurant that does that, everybody, every woman is going to be talking to her friends, hey, you've got to, take, get, got to go to that restaurant, you know. Hmm. By my uh, simple arithmetic, you've been in the expert industry for in excess of 20 years. Yeah. What turns you on about it? I think it's very creative. You know, you can really get creative, and the beauty is that you can do anything with anybody. The hard thing is to get good people, and you've got to be very selective who you work with. You do not want to refer bad people. We've all made that mistake. Be selective and be careful how you do it, but it's very creative, and, and the more you, you learn from each other as you do it. You come up with your brainstorming. This is the mastermind on steroids. It really works. Do you have any questions that you would really like me to ask you because you have a burning message inside you would like to share with our experts in the audience? Uh, you know, well, the, 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 maybe this the question a lot of people ask, can I do this? You know, can I do this? You know, Robin does it, and I know you do it, and there's a lot of smart joint venture guys here. You know, Iman does it. I mean, Iman's a genius for this stuff. But... Can I do it? It might be your question. And if your question is that, here's the, here's the question I have in response to that. Do you work hard and are you a quitter? Because if you're a quitter, forget about it. It's not going to work for you. If you're lazy, it's not going to work for you. But if you work hard and you don't quit, you can learn to do this and you can retire with no money and no risk and you can do it fast. Because to me, retirement is having more residual income than I need to live on. And that's according to... Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki said, if, if you need $5,000 a month and you're making $5,001 in residual or passive income, you're rich. Because how much would you have to invest to get that kind of return on your money? So um, really, it's, can you do it? Yes, you can. If you don't quit, you work hard, you prepare to learn, sky's the limit. Everybody in this room can do it. Mm. 
Robin, Long where's story. this industry going? This I think expert it's a, industry. I think it's an idea whose time has come because people are more and more, if you read the book Brandwashed, <laughs> how many of you read that book, Brandwashed? Fantastic book. Um, people are tired of getting ripped off. They're tired of, of you know, slick marketing. They're tired of that stuff. They want relationship. They want trust. That's why social media is doing so well. You know, I got a client that, that trains dogs in, in Utah, a $10,000 deal for me, and he got me on Facebook. So does Facebook work? Yes, it does, if you do it right. Again, we can learn from smart people like Sally. But um, the, the future of joint ventures, that's the way it's going. And the sooner you can get on that bandwagon, the better for you. The better you are at it, the more money you'll make. I'm all out of questions. Thank Good you stuff. so, so much. Thank you so Thank much. You.